So I'm going to start out with sharing three facts with you. Fact one, a recent report from Goldman Sachs indicated that over or about 300 million jobs could be affected by generative AI, meaning that 18% of the global workforce could be automated with a more advanced economies heavily impacting uh, the emerging markets. Fact two, an article by Forbes suggests that artificial intelligence has already caused a 50% to 70% decrease in wages, creating income inequality and threatening millions of jobs. Fact three, maybe. The World Economic Forum concluded in a recent report, a new generation of smart machines fueled by rapid advances in AI and robotics could potentially replace large portions of existing human jobs. My argument is, is that we are in a period of tectonic shifts. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the term, a tectonic shift it refers to the 15 tectonic plates that are on the Earth. And not every planet has tectonic plates. And these tectonic plates, due to our unique nature of Earth, actually move and they change. And they create things like the Himalayan mountains, where you have the uh, Indian tectonic plate running into the Asia Minor uh, tectonic plate. This is something that is happening sometimes uh, slowly in a geograph I mean uh, geology uh, terms, but are happening much, much faster. So what we find ourselves is, is that we find ourselves at what we refer to as the beginning. But really, it's also the end. You have to get to the end before you start the new beginning. And the end is where everything starts. I'm going to talk to you about four things, four concepts. The first one is frontier. The second one is decay. The third is distractions. And the fourth is distortions. So as we start to look through this, the thing that I would want to start with is the story of the Wright brothers. These are all stories for you to hear. The Wright brothers were in a competition as to who could build the very first flying plane. And it, there was a criteria that was going to be set up. And what was unique about it was their main competitor had the support of government and money, lots and lots of money. But it was the Wright brothers who actually determined what they needed to do. And they, they created the down and created the Kitty Hawk uh, for the very first flight that, that lasted a total of 34 seconds. Here we are essentially 100 years later, and we are now dealing with things about discussions about going to Mars. We are really on the frontier of a new uh, industry cycle and um, era. The second story is the story of exploration and discovery. Christopher Columbus is said to be a person who was trying to find a route to the Indies, to India actually specifically so that he could actually shorten the time it took to get product from India back to Europe. And he was basically uh, uh, tasked with the plan of finding this new route by going in a direction that they had previously not gone. That's not dissimilar to the same story that we are. We are going out into a new frontier. We're finding new ways of seeing what is happening and what is capable. And we really don't know where the end, destina end destination really is. We've had blockchain now, as we now know it, uh, since Bitcoin for roughly 14 years, even though tomorrow you get to hear from the guy who actually created blockchain back in 1990. And the, for the third story, and that is, is that opportunities and challenges. We are really no dissimilar than the 49ers who ran out to California to try to find and pan for gold. We're trying to find gold in this new technology. And the new technology is blockchain and AI. Because without blockchain, AI is just going to run rampant. Blockchain is the trust machine. It's the ability to put documents, knowledge, information, and have it believed by everyone. So that brings us then to our next topic. The decay of technology. 
The Industrial Revolution brought about a new change where one machine replaced what 100 men were doing. And we've seen this repeat over and over and over. It's been said, as I shared with you the very first fact, that Goldman Sachs has said that 300 million people will be displaced by AI technology. Now, whether that's true or not is not even the question. The question is, is that we have legacy systems that are decaying, and they're approaching the point of where they're no longer going to be needed. I used the example of Blockbuster Video because at one point, Blockbuster Video was the largest distributor of video in the United States. And they just did an amazing job. But they ignored the changes that were happening in their own business model. The second aspect of it is, is evolution. Oftentimes, technologies become nothing more than relics. You start to think about what happened. Did you know that Kodak was the first to develop digital photography? They thought it was just a clever little thing, but they were in the business of making film. They weren't in the digital photography business or the photography business. They were in the film making business. Luckily for them, they were able to change some of their business model. Now, they are nowhere near where they once were. But instead of being a relic, they're still finding relevance in our society. The third is the lessons learned. And here what we have here is, is a Blackberry. But I could have put up a Nokia. I remember specifically the first time I got a Blackberry. I'd had a Nokia phone, but I wanted a Blackberry. And then when I got the Blackberry, I was like, ah. I have finally arrived. I have this little keyboard. It has this clicky thing. It felt really good, and it was just like, I am now living the life. What you see in both Nokia and BlackBerry was is that their reliance on staying where the technology was, not realizing that the technology itself was decaying. So as a result of that, when we start to think of blockchain and artificial intelligence and its impact of uh, new technologies on us, we have to realize that there is obsolescence, there is evolution, and there are lessons to be learned from the changes in our technology. The next one I'd like to talk about, of the four points I brought up, is of distractions. Sometimes we want to believe that things are going to be better than they are. So I don't know I, 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 if you would have asked me this Four years ago, I would have not known what Coachella is, but it is an event for influencers to do glamorous things. Well, unfortunately, there were some people who created the Fry Festival. This is back in 2017, and they pitched it as an exotic uh, destination. They pitched it as the most elegant components and the best foods and the best people, the most beautiful people were going to be there. And when people finally arrived, they were paying $8,000 a ticket back in 2017. When people arrived, they found tents, tents, which was their lodging. And the food that they were having was cheese sandwiches in a styrofoam case. So the key is, is, is be sure to realize that there is a difference between hype and reality. That is relevant, though, to what our technology is also happening with. Um, we have to realize that there is a lot of hype. Cryptocurrencies could arguably be said is a hype. It is proven to be a little more than that, so it's become a reality. But we have to be careful because not everything that is thought up with the emergence of these technologies is going to be relevant. The next thing that we have to be aware of is, is avoiding t uh, pitfalls. So here we have the Trojan horse. So what we have here is, is a representation of something that is brought into our own house, brought into our own organizations, with the idea that it celebrates victory, when in reality what we've done is, is invited our own defeat. So we have to be careful that there are distractions that are happening. And don't count every single win as the end of what your journey is. The third distraction is, is just a recommendation, and that is, is that people should focus on value. What we have to do is, as an organization, as GBA, as we represent all of our own individual organizations, 
we have to make sure that what we're trying to do is to focus on the value of what the technology is. Simply because the technology can do something doesn't mean that it should. So we have to be careful for these distractions to focus on what is reality and not the hype. Avoiding the pitfalls of accepting into our own houses and organizations technologies that may not ever come to fruition. In fact, it might even result in our demise. And the third is, is to recognize our value. The next uh, aspect is, is distortions. Oftentimes, there are stories told about how people have invented things single-handedly. The best, of course, is Thomas Edison. He's credited with creating the light bulb, but he wasn't the first person to create the light bulb. He was the one that perfected it. And he even says that he tried a thousand different ways to uh, light a light bulb where the filament would not just immediately burn out. And it took him a thousand different tries, including the, the hair uh, of a friend's beard to see if it would act as a filament, to see if it would happen. Satoshi Nakamoto is credited with creating blockchain. What he created was Bitcoin, but he didn't even create the idea of a digital currency. He only took the best of other technology, blockchain, built and created by Scott Stornetta and Stuart Haber, and then added in other things that those two gentlemen created, and then adding in this concept that was already out there called proof of work. And proof of work was only originally an idea to stop spam. So to send out an email, your machine had to do certain work. So you couldn't just send out a million uh, emails. So he combined these technologies into what we now know as Bitcoin. But the key is, is not to misinterpret it. There's lots of intersectional ideas that are occurring and you're gonna hear about a lot of intersectional ideas as it relates to um, members within the organization here at GBA, as well as others who were invited guests and speakers about how they're deploying both AI and blockchain. The next thing we have to do is, is realize though that there is, at least as it relates to cryptocurrencies, there's this feeling that it's dirty. Um, there's ethical issues that have to be managed. And I used Enron simply because before Enron's collapse, they were considered by their terms, the smartest people in the room. And what we found out was is that it was basically not a Ponzi scheme, but a, a scheme to manipulate accounting rules to hide the failures that they had. So what we have to be careful with is, is as we deploy and think about deployment of these technologies, AI, blockchain, is that we don't find ourselves in an ethical uh, chasm that keeps us there without finding a way out. The third thing here for distortions is the realistic expectations. And everyone's, I have a, a Gartner uh, hype cycle here where it comes to it, uh, the uh, awareness, it reaches a peak of, of excitement, it then falls down into the trough of disillusionment before it finds its, its way. Uh, you can't see it because it's really not blown up too big, but this is the cycle that is currently published by Gartner for AI. And really what, what they're saying is, is that a lot about AI is on the upward cycle for awareness, but on the downward side is, is that we're already in a, in a trough of disillusionment. So I want to kind of almost conclude, it's not the end here, but with a uh, quote by Bill Gates, and it says, the job disruption from AI will be massive and we need to prepare for it. Certainly, we're going to lose jobs to automation. The question is, what do we do about it? And hopefully, as you go through the conference today, you're gonna find ways that you can do something about it to not only make sure that this new technology is then utilized to the benefit of your organizations and to the government, but also to the benefit of the people who work there. So what I say is this, is that we stand on this new frontier, we must decide whether we're gonna be the Wright brothers or blockbuster of the blockchain era. One more. So the takeaways that you should have, and these are things that you should be thinking about as you go through the conference in the next two days. Plan your next steps in this Web3 journey. Now I had a discussion with 
Where are you, Web 5? Oh, there you are. He's confused. Be patient with him. So what you have is, is plan your next steps with the Web3 journey. Join this revolution of blockchain and artificial intelligence. Make sure that you unlock the potential of both technologies. Imagine a world where blockchain and AI work in hand-in-hand uh, in hand with one another to achieve objectives. You need to certify your future. One of the most important things that GBA has come out with is the BMM which is the blockchain maturity model. It is a way for organizations to actually have a certification that their blockchain meets a criteria that has been established by industry players and uh, subject matter experts. The thing you also have to realize is this. The ball's in your court. You need to either embrace it or left behind. You know, there's a, a lot of discussions about what did the buggy makers do when cars were first introduced. And they were saying, well, there's only going to be a few people who are ever going to need these cars because everyone has a buggy. It was repeated in technology when IBM thought that there would only be the need for maybe a dozen or maybe even a hundred personal computers. We're seeing the same thing as it relates to Phones, smartphones, Apple showed BlackBerry and Nokia how wrong they were about what the future is. The thing that I would say is this, is, is that we're at the point of a summit where we can start to see the clouds dissipate to see what the future holds, but we still don't know what the horizon looks like. The next part is actually one that is hard for me, and that is, is to decentralize your thinking. It's, it's hard to do it simply because to do so changes the fundamental paradigms that we have as, as organizations, as we have as a community, and as a society. The next is, is to realize the future is now and it's written in code. That doesn't mean that the code is perfect, but the code is here. You know, if you think about the emergence of AI, AI has been with us for close to, I don't know, a decade easily. If you've ever had an Alexa or a Google uh, device in your phone and you start asking, what's the weather today? Or saying to you, a child, you know, tell, have Google tell me a, a bedtime story. Or you ask what the sports scores are. Or what my wife and I do, we debate things about what's the, a replacement for, say, um, ginger in a recipe. So we'll ask Google for all these those kinds of things. It's been here. It didn't emerge last November when ChatGPT released their first 3.0. It's been here all along. We just didn't realize it. And finally, from this point forward, you are a pioneer. Oftentimes we think of ourselves as being late to the party. We're not late to the party. We're still at the very beginning. I started this by telling you that the end is also the beginning. The end for some technology has arrived and a new technology is arising. Please be aware of it. Take the moments and the insights that you learn from this conference to understand that this is the point of which both GBA serves and you are serving as pioneers in this new endeavor. So thank you.